Stadium Stampede, Inner Circle versus Elite. So they are in the football stadium. There's a ring in the middle of the field. They've got the Elite logo in one end zone, the Inner Circle logo in the other. The Jaguars cheerleaders are out there. The mascots out there. The marching band is out there. It's a big show. We get starting lineups. Now, the Inner Circle actually had jerseys with numbers, and they were all appropriate. And uh, I'm sad the Elite didn't even try to keep up their end of the gimmick here. So the Inner Circle's numbers were 93 for Sammy Guevara this year he was born. 27 for Chris Jericho. That's the number his dad wore in the NHL. Uh, Proud and Powerful had 51 and 50, which is self-explanatory. And Jake Hager, I didn't get the number, but it was his, his number for Oklahoma Sooners football. And I'm sad the Elite did not also have music. But they come out, and they get the whole stadium entrance, the big giant smoke machine, and they're running out of the tunnel, and the music's playing. And the Elite come out. It was so awesome, those entrances. They were awesome. Like, as soon as I saw the entrance, I was like, I don't even care what happens in the match. Like, there's no way this should have gone on before the world title match. Absolutely. It's like pageantry. It's like it's like yes. the show ended, and now we're starting a whole other show right here. That's actually a very good way to put it. This yes. was a whole other show. That is <laughs> certainly that is was. For sure. So, the Elite come out, and there's no Hangman page. And the Bucks are looking around. Hardy's looking around. Omega tries to assure them it's all going to be okay. And the match begins. And when I say the match begins, they're not even in the ring. The Elite's on this side of the field. The Inner Circle's on this side of the field. And they essentially do a kickoff, and they go charging at each other as fast as they can, and they fight. They don't. They, the kickoff is them drop-kicking each other. Yes. They all run at each other, and they crash in the middle, and bodies go flying. Mostly Sammy's. <laughs> Sammy's body flew around a lot. So as they're fighting out here, they saw the uh, crowd noise from the arena, which is a very needed step in this so there's still crowd heat which as we noticed sounded great as they're fighting out there tony shivani says well to be fair that is natural turf and there is an awkward pause and jr says what's your point tony tony says well it's not as hard like astroturf and there's another awkward pause and excalibur of all people says do you want me to take you out there and suplex you tony and tony said no he said home field advantage ah that's even better than believe yeah. So Sammy Guevara whips somebody's ass and he's celebrating and he's standing alone in the middle of the field and he turns to the opposite end of the field and there's Hangman Page and more importantly, there is Hangman Page's horse. I couldn't even believe it. When that horse started charging down that field, I was like, I'm not going to do it. He's going to take his head off with that Larry when he gets to no. him. But no, there was no, more so, to come. So Sammy, much like the golf cart, turns and runs in a straight line. Now, horses are far more maneuverable than a golf cart, but still. Sure. And I'm laughing at my ass off that the idea Sammy Guevara could outrun a horse. But then <laughs> Sammy Guevara outran the damn horse. <laughs> so good for you, Sammy. Well done. He runs into the stadium. He hides somewhere. Pays on his horse, disappears in the stadium, hunting for him. The other, I will say, Vinny, in like Sammy's defense or Hangman Pages, whatever you want to call it, if if the horse would have gone after him onto that change of pavement, the horse would have been in deep shit. I actually like, thought it would about have that slipped, too. Slipped, it would have been big time trouble. So it's not like he necessarily outran the horse in a straight sprint. He like outsmarted Hangman and the horse, kind of. That, that, that horse, yeah. He horses. mildly outsmarted them. I mean, if horses. he really wanted outsmarted, he would have just gotten the ring. I don't think that a horse is going to leap into that <laughs> ring. <laughs> Stayed in that pool on the upper deck. Yeah. Oh, uh, God. So the eight guys left on the field. They get in the ring. They do some stuff for a few minutes. Oh, wait. Let's not, let's not gloss over this, Vinny. 80,000-seat stadium. Yes. There's one ring. Yes. But they're we wrestlers, and so the ring is like a magnet. They're all yes. sucked to the ring. <laughs> and they're all in there fucking doing all these high spots. They do the spot where everybody hits a big move on everybody else. Yep. Everybody's hitting a finisher on everybody else in the middle of this giant empty building where falls count anywhere. And I loved it because I was mad when they did Money in the Bank and like everyone's brawling to the top of the building. And I thought, okay, well, when they get there, they'll actually do a TLC match. But they didn't. They just like got to the building. Then Oscar climbed up and got the thing. And then they did a couple of spots and then Otis caught the thing. So this 
They like got in the ring and they did like a match for five minutes. And it was a good yes, match. It sure was. But yes, your point is valid. They had like 30,000 square feet to choose from. And they chose this one 16 by 16 square in the middle. <laughs> but uh, eventually, Sammy Guevara comes running back. And he's very happy and proud to have fooled uh, Hangman Page and his horse. I'm back, guys, he shouts. All the cheerleaders are chanting Sammy's name because yes, he's they a Spanish were. god. He's a Spanish god. Uh, he helps them lay out the, the Elite. He goes for a shooting star press, but he misses. The Elite make the big comeback. There's a huge train wreck spot. And then, finally, everyone starts to brawl everywhere. The Bucks end up in one end zone. They find a ladder. Matt Jackson, with his bad ribs, scales the ladder, climbs onto the goalposts. Does he feel goal off the goal? Uh, excuse me, a moonsault off the goalposts. Actually, so that. Matt, as we talked about on, on Wednesday, he did that one dive when they made their big return, and he, he like busted his rib. And I, I guess it's like bruise or something, but he's legitimately taped up because his rib's fucked up. And if you've ever had a fucked up rib, like everything you do hurts. So I guess... Like, Nick was begging him to let Nick do the moonsault off the end zone because he doesn't have a busted rib. That's a good reason. And Matt, like, insisted that he do it. And so he did that spot. He did all of the rolling Germans out on the Astro... Or the rolling Northern Lights on the Astro Turf. He certainly did. And keep in mind, like, I don't know the exact amount of time, but they f this was filmed over, like, eight hours. And so, like, these guys had to had to, you know... It's not like a normal match where you warm up, you go out there, you wrestle, and then you go back and you're done. I mean, it was like a it was like a movie set. Mm -hmm. So you had to do a bunch of crazy ass spots. Then you'd sit around for a while while they filmed some other people doing crazy ass spots. Then you had to go start doing Northern Lights suplexes across the fucking AstroTurf. These the guys grass. were so sore the next you day. Think he from did the doing whole hundred match. yards. Yeah, of course he did, Tom. What are you talking about? What do you, you think, think this is? He dreamed in a top rope belt of the cement. Well, I mean, he did. Just a little bit of creative editing. But anyway, they were all beat up. Yeah. So inside the bowels of the stadium, Hangman Page is still on his horse, still hunting for Sammy. Keep in mind, Sammy has been filmed several times for several minutes in the ring doing stuff. So at this point, I determined Hangman's already drunk. And well, he doesn't no have a monitor. No sooner should I say that than Jim Ross says, if I ever get lost, please do not send Hangman Page to look for me. A sound point. So Paige gave up, and he went to the bar. The brawl moves out into the, the, the concourse. There's the rally zone, is what this section of the stadium is called. It's the, the end zone. There's a big big patio out there where you can watch the game and still get drunk. And uh, they're brawling with Omega and Hardy, and Omega gets salt in the eyes. He gets slammed onto a guardrail. He then gets put through a guardrail. I didn't know guardrails could bend. I certainly hope this is gimmicked. It was actually very clever because he takes this this power bomb from Proud and Powerful through this this thing, and they're both standing on like you know you know go to, you go to a, a wherever and they've got that little tiny little thing that you put your drinks on, but it's it's a table. It's it's a table, but it's got like it doesn't have four <laughs> legs. It's got like the the really just the one skinny leg. A, a one legged table. Yes. A bar stool. So they're both. No, it's not a bar stool, but it's actual table. A, a bar table. But they're both standing on the bar table, and when they power bomb him through, all of a sudden I think it's Ortiz's table. It just starts to tip over, but. They just immediately went to the replay because it's a taped show. And if you're going to tape the show, then you may as well take advantage of that. So instead of showing Ortiz fall off the table on the power bomb, or instead of saying, Omega, he fell off the table, can we power bomb you through that goddamn guardrail again? They just did very creative editing, and you couldn't see that it happened. So Omega is out of the picture. Proud and powerful grab Matt Hardy, and it's time for, I'm sure, Brian's favorite part of the night. Oh, man, it's never not the greatest. There's a pool in this football stadium. And they go to throw Matt Hardy into the pool. And they succeed, actually, in throwing Matt Hardy into the pool. And Santana jumps in the pool to finish him off. And Ortiz hesitates. And Santana, who is standing in not even hip-deep water, turns around and says, what are you doing? Ortiz says, I can't swim. Santana says, stop being a bendejo. So... Not even jumping into the pool, Ortiz goes to the ladder and slowly, gingerly, carefully climbs down into the three feet of water. They grab Matt, who has been Damascus 
up to this point. And they attempt to drown him. Now, the pool has one side that is plexiglass. It's clear plastic. You can see inside. And the camera, from that angle, sees Matt Hardy open his eyes, look into the camera, smile. And I, I, I think he did the, uh, the, the, the Hardy hand signal or maybe the V1. I'm not even it's sure. It was the V1. The, the V1. And Matt Hardy version one pops out of the pool, starts laying waste. Actually, even before, I'm getting ahead of myself. He is the V1 symbol. Then we cut to the outside shot of the pool, where Proud and Powerful are still drowning him, but then a graphic appears. Uh, matter of fact, it says. And Proud and Powerful can see this graphic. And they stop. They're distracted by the matter of facts. And then Matt pops up and beats their ass for a while. And one of the facts, and this is very important, Matt Hardy can hold his breath for 346 seconds. So, they have a big fight. They try to drown him again. But again, Matt can hold his breath for 346 seconds. They go to leave Matt in the pool, but this time broken Matt Hardy appears. He lays waste to all of them. Because Ortiz. it is a lake of reincarnation. Yes, that's the, the, they planted the water from the Hardy compound in the swimming pool. Ortiz, and the, the camera didn't get enough of a shot of this, Ortiz somehow in this three-foot pool got a life ring uh, to try to save himself. But Matt drags him out of the pool. He lays waste to them with a table and a big giant bell and a chair of wheels. Somehow here, Ortiz gets strapped into the chair of wheels with the duct tape. He's still moving himself around. And Santana is thrown into a ice chest, which is then locked with a broomstick. What happened was Matt put Ortiz's head under a bell and rang the bell, which caused poor Ortiz to go into convulsions. And then he was strapped into the wheelchair. And then Matt put Santana in the ice box and told him it would help his inflammation. We cut to the bar, right? Actually, we cut to the uh, hallway first where Hager finds the horse, sees the signs for the East Club lobby, figures that Paige must be in the bar. Paige is sitting at the bar, drinking. Hager sits down next to him. Paige pours him a drink and asks him, you here to drink or you here to fight? Ah, what's the difference? And they start fighting. So there's a pool table there, a... a Pool cue gets busted over Hager. He totally no-sells it. Hangman Page did some Jackie Chan shit, rolling around and evading this big monster for a while. But eventually he was caught and urinogied onto the pool table. And in a spot that I can only imagine was the, the, the spot of Hangman Page's dreams, he was thrown onto the bar and slid all the way down, throwing every drink and food and napkin they could find flying. Brian, did you catch Excalibur's Big Lebowski reference? I did. Sometimes, Sometimes you eat the bar. Sometimes... The bar, it eats you. And that's the bar eight, Adam Page. But uh, Omega shows up to make the save with a beer bottle, but Hager knows sell that. No, so it's he, the bubbly. They broke it, like 10 bottles of bubbly over the they, guy's head. They found a it case. Four, four bottles, which was three too many. If you ever think of a bottle of the head, he wasn't bleeding. I was very upset by this. It's Jake Hager, dude. He's a Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tastes a lot of bubbly to put Jake Hager down. Yeah, come on. They, eventually, one of these bottles, they had like a whole case of bubbly. It takes him out. And Hangman does a flip off Omega's back to the buckshot lariat and take Hager out of it. Omega has a swig of milk. Hangman has a swig of whiskey. And that's the end of this subplot for a while. So we then go to a bit where we cut back and forth between Matt Jackson fighting with Sammy Guevara and Nick Jackson fighting with Chris Jericho. Matt is in one end zone. He grabs Sammy and begins to do the rolling Northern Light suplexes. We cut to Nick throwing Jericho into the mister. It's for hot weather in Florida when you're playing football games. All it does is spray cool water on you. Jericho screams like the Wicked Witch of, uh, Wicked Witch of the West, which I butchered. They fight a little more. We cut back to Matt Jackson, who's still doing Northern Light suplexes, now about midfield. Back to Jericho. He gets a megaphone. He is screaming at Nick. He should have stayed at home. Nick fights back, starts to just peg Jericho in the ass and crotch with footballs. The fans. Has he fan ever thrown a football before? It was not the best form ever. Was oh, my God. <laughs> Maybe not as an offensive weapon. He's he's ready for the Jaguars, I guess. So, oh, uh, wow. <laughs> Brutal. Oh, come on. We could all have a good laugh at that one. Come on. So, there's a big... The, 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 by the way, uh, Tom, the, the fans in attendance were chanting perfect spiral. So they were more impressed with uh, Nick's form. 
There's a big jaguar's he head threw there. like a girl. <laughs> there's a and big... I say that with all due respect. <laughs> there's a big jaguar's head there that Nick goes into. And then Jericho spies the Jacksonville Jaguars mascot, Jackson DeVille. Funny you should say that after that Undertaker documentary, Tom. That's true. What? Michelle McCool is apparently is a yeah, very good with all, balls. Got a great I said spiral. with all due respect. I see. I guess when you say it throws like a girl, it depends what girl you're talking about. So Jericho. My daughter. She's probably three. a bad throw of footballs, I would guess. Jericho and Jackson DeVille have a stare down. Jackson DeVille grabs his belly and or crotch. It's hard to tell where one ends and the other begins. He shakes them in Jericho's face. And Jericho just lays his ass out with the Judas effect. <laughs> <laughs> it's just awesome. It's so great. And every time this fall, whenever Gardner Minshew gets sacked, you're going to get this gif on your timeline with the other team's logo on Jericho's head. I guarantee this is going to happen. Uh, so there's a field goal bit where Nick super kicks Jericho into a net, calls for the field goal. Jericho gets a hold of the bat, hits a bat shot, makes a cover. Nick kicks out at two. Jericho insists, no, no, I want a replay. He pulls out the reg- red challenge flag. And they go into the review, review booth. Aubrey. Yes, the, uh, the ref and Jericho go into the review booth. and Aubrey Edwards. Yes. What did I say? You didn't say anybody. You just said the ref. I said, well, that's okay. Thank you. Yes. It's Aubrey Edwards. Yes. She determines the call on the field stands. The match will continue. Jericho tells her you're a shitty referee, which... It's probably something you hear in every single NFL game ever at some point. Matt completes his 500 Northern Lights suplexes. He reaches the end zone. He scores a touchdown. He spikes Sammy Guevara's head into the grass. He then begins to dance doing the Alex Wright celebration. And then I don't know what the other one was. He is flagged for unsportsmanlike conduct. He super kicks the referee. I think it was Ross who just says he deserved it for the Alex Wright celebration. <laughs> So the uh, the Bucks they go to double team Jericho. Nick has to run all the way up the stadium steps, then run all the way back down them to do a big giant splash through a table onto him. Page appears with a line marker that draws the yard lines in the football field. That was funny, by the way, that big splash because you see him jump in the air and then you see him go through the table. And I thought oh, I probably jumped onto a crash pad, and then they they did the uh, Velveteen Dream thing. But then they cut to another shot, yes. and in, in fact, he jumped fucking ten feet in the air and splashed this guy through the table. Yes. What's and the Paige, Velveteen Dream thing? He Is jumped that... off the post, and oh, they no yeah, mind. yeah. So uh, Adam Page appears with the line marker that draws the lines in the football field. He draws a line over Jericho's body and his face, in fact, and as Tony Schiavone notes. He went right up the crotch. Now we cut to Sammy Guevara. Last seen being suplexed into the end zone and having his head spiked into the turf. He's crawling across the grass like this is Apocalypse Now. <laughs> As he is crawling, it basically he basically was for him. It manages to get himself into perfect position so that when the sprinkler goes off, it hits him in both the face and the balls. As he's selling that, he gets laid out. He sits up with his face right into the spray again. He keeps thinking of that. But eventually he gets to his feet, looks around. He doesn't see anyone in the inner circle, but he also doesn't see anyone in the elite. He determines he is the last man standing, and he has won. But then an engine begins to rev, and he looks behind him. And yes, Matt Hardy and Kenny Omega have the golf cart again. And they do the exact same shot from the exact same angle with the exact same action with the added bonus of Bryce Rensburg running as fast as he can trying to keep up with this golf cart. <laughs> now, credit to Sammy. Uh, for the second time in this match, he outruns a, a, a mounted vehicle of sorts. He outruns the golf cart, reaches the stands, does the Lambo leap up, and just keeps running. They all go up to fight him. There's a platform up there, very convenient. He's able to fight them off. He is trying to choke Matt Hardy to death. I'll kill you, he's screaming. But then there is a new drone. It is Neo-1, which is natural something. I didn't write the whole thing down. But Sammy is distracted by Neo-1. Kenny hits the V-trigger. He grabs him atop this giant platform. Herks him up on top of the shoulders. Oh, God. I thought he was going to give him the one winged angel on that platform. Yes. That would have been the end of this poor guy. 
But instead, literally, it's a 15 foot drop. Oh, it's more than that. Maybe it's a huge 20 drop. feet. It's probably 20 feet. I mean, I looked at that and I thought, you were better off going 20 feet yep. out of that little crash pad down there than taking that on top of that that platform. They, they, had, they had a professional stuntman level, big giant windbag with a platform on top of it. Oh, yes. But this is still a one-winged angel where you have to lift a guy onto your shoulders, stand on the edge, and flip him over and jump off. That took a lot of balls. Dude, That's... think about poor Sammy. Like, all you're looking upside down at the sky. Yeah. You can't see shit. And this guy's jumping. And you fall for a long time. A long ass and you time. don't know when the fuck you're going to land. Kenny Omega knows when he's going to land. Sammy just lands when he lands. That was scary. Oh, but it was, so it was at least fun. safe. Yeah, that was a big ass. It was such a big crash pad that, like, they bounced. Like, you could yeah. see it go down and back up again. Yes, yes. So, Aubrey counts three from, like, 20 feet away, but she couldn't get onto the pad. So, Sammy is pinned. The Elite have won. They all have a big celebration. Kenny gets a Gatorade bath. You can see Hangman and Matt. There's still just a little bit of hurt feelings between the two, but the Hangman sticks around this time. And they all celebrate together, and the show ends. The good guys have won. Their friends are all friends. Everyone goes home happy. What a perfect way to end this show. This was a really, really, really fun match. It was just so... It was wacky, but it wasn't, like, excessively wacky. It was cinematic, but it wasn't excessively cinematic. It was a stadium stampede. Yes. That's what they advertised, and that's what they delivered legitimately with a stampede. And there were animals yes. there. I mean, this was this was definitely not false advertising. 